Hello boys and girls, as you might remember, we are doing this sick, amazing death metal mixing contest right now, where you can mix a death metal song recorded in 1997 on high-end analog gear, Neve console, Studer tape machine, uh, and, you know, fancy Neumann microphones, uh, you know, dive back into the late 90s and mix a song from the early days of American death metal. The band is called Malamore from New York and the song is pretty fucking amazing. And don't forget that you can win more than $70,000 of prizes, stuff like this Austrian audio microphone that I still have here because of my latest video, Audient interfaces, EVE audio monitors, and a lot of other really cool stuff if you join the mixing contest. But you know what? I also mixed that song. Of course I did. And today I want to show you my mix. I want to walk you through all the tracks. I'm 90% done with that mix, only the automation missing. Sounds pretty cool. I want to show you my approach and maybe that's an inspiration for you because you can still join the contest. Let's get started. <laughs> So here we are in Cubase and I'm 90% done mixing the song. I'm happy with the overall sound. I'm also going into a mastering limiter. So what we are listening to is already limited. That means we have a competitive loudness. This is seriously loud. The only thing missing is the automation, especially on the toms, but also on the vocals and some vocal effects. I always add quite a lot of vocal effects on death metal productions just to make everything a little more interesting in an arrangement like this where you just have two guitars, a bass and drums and there's nothing happening. You can add some, some spice by adding distortion or delays or reverb effects to the vocals. So that is missing right now. But I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I'm pretty happy with the overall sound. What I was trying to do is to get a good blend between the 90s and today. So I wanted to keep as much of the vibe of the spirit, the raw spirit of the original recording. I did not use any additional samples or anything else like from modern sample libraries. I wanted to keep as much of that spirit, but make it a little more in your face, a little more hi-fi sounding, uh, make the guitar sound a little less scooped and a little less 90s than the original. Yeah, just find a good blend between the 90s and today. So let's have a listen. Right. Sounds pretty cool. So I just talked about the guitars. So maybe we want to have a look at the guitars first because they sound quite different now. Let's solo the guitars and let's have a look at this. So I was using basically just one EQ and a multiband compressor. So let's have a listen and I will bypass those two plugins a few times. This is something that I do very, very often to distorted guitars, not only when they, when, if they are recorded in the 90s. I try to get rid of all the frequencies that mask the tonal information. So let's have a look at this EQ. So uh, I'm trying to, to focus on the tonal information, to focus on the mids, and that's why I'm cutting out the low end here at 120 hertz. That's why I'm cutting out the highs at... 9k to get rid of all that sh up there and i'm basically boosting here in the tonal area this is around 1k it's actually pretty high um i think there was a resonance that's why i got rid of something around 2k and this is untypical let's just bypass this one for a second and listen to the guitars again <laughs> And focus on how much the whole, like the voice of the guitars actually 
like like comes into into focus when I engage the EQ. Here we hear a lot of whoop and kick, and now. And then I guess at some point I added this because I needed more bite in the mix. Yeah, this might not sound that cool solo, but it just brings the guitars a little more up front. So you see, this is one processor only, but it's changing a lot. It's not changing the distortion and the real character of the tracks, but it's removing some of that 90s character and just brings it a little bit into the modern age. Then we have this Fab Filter Pro MB compressing the low end. And with this one, I'm reducing the low end, especially during the palm mutes where things sound a little too boomy. So you see in every palm mute, it's like, it's dipping, dipping the low end a little bit. By the way, if you wanna learn more about both using a dynamic EQ or a multiband compressor or a normal EQ on guitars, have a look at my academy, Cola Audio Cult. I've got two courses exactly about that. So if you wanna learn more about that, uh, have a look below. There are a few links to my academy where you find those courses. Let's have a look at the bass. You, normally I start with the drums, but let's do it a little differently. So the main bass track sounds like this. Three plugins, let me bypass the plugins. So this is the original bass. So <laughs> it sounds quite a bit more evil. Yeah, I decided to really uh, make it as dangle dangle and as evil as possible. So what I added was first plugin, CLA bass. This is just a very cool plugin to pre-shape your bass before you go into a distortion plugin. And this time I'm only using the growl. Acts a little bit like the Tube Screamer, you know, adding a little overtone, like distortion and an upper mid bump and making the, the bass a little tighter. Uh, great plugin. By the way, I will put links to all plugins used uh, below. So if you want to check out any of those plugins, you'll find the links below. Um, so start with this. Then we use a plugin I haven't used for a long time. This is Bass Grinder. It's on my Benighted preset. I guess I used this on a Benighted record. And together, those two are making things which sound really evil. Turn them on again. And finally, I got an EQ to like dip the upper bass region a bit where it got a little too boomy. And at some point, this sounded a little too thin for me. That's why I added a clean track for the low end. Then I filtered out everything below 177 Hertz with a linear phase EQ. Let's listen to that first. Then added extreme compression. Cornef Audio Talkback Limiter, great limiter. By the way, if you are in my academy, uh, we have a deal on, with Cornev. You get everything, I think, for 25% less. Get that limiter, it's great. There's a link below, both to the academy and to the limiter. Um, so, compressing the shit out of this one, but I'm always trying to avoid any low-end distortion. This track should sound clean. And then I add Waves R bass. This is still the old version. Also a link below, this is a must have plugin. Adding some low end, and then we're adding this track around minus 70 B to our main track. Let's start with the main bass track and then I'll add the low end track. And I really love how audible the bass is with that distortion in the mix without being annoying. Amazing. All right. So let's move on with the drums. Let's start with the overheads. The overheads sound a little weird. I think the mics were originally 
like very, very far spread out. So I have them panned pretty narrow at, what is it? 66, of course, 0.6. So they're only left, right, 66%. And they go to a group where I have this. We start with a compressor. It sounds pretty compressed already. This is like a FabFilter Pro C in the bus setting, the SSL bus compressor setting. I do have a low cut on the side chain. And the idea is that the compressor is both reacting to kick and especially snare, but no, not overreacting to the snare, but also reacting to the cymbals. You see this? So the idea is to even out the overheads as much as possible because I don't have any closed mics on the cymbals. Uh, what do we have? What else do we have? Then we have an EQ boosting the highs. Pretty standard. All right, let's have a look at the snare. And this is interesting. In the mix, I had a lot of problems getting enough punch and low end out of that snare. So that was basically all I was doing with a lot of processing. So have a look at this. Uh, we start with drum leveler just to even out everything a little more, but let me just bypass all the plugins and turn them on again. Boom, boom. So I was trying to turn it from cock, cock to boom, boom. Doesn't sound that cool solo, but it was much better in the mix. So let's have a look. We have one EQ here boosting the main fundamental frequency, dipping something around here and removing everything below 11K just to get rid of some of the bleed. Uh, after that, transient designer, boosting the attack a lot to get more punch. Another EQ, even more punch. <laughs> like dipping some of the boxy frequencies around here. And finally, what is this? Ozone, exciter. Okay, desperately trying to get more punch in here. I was adding overtones to the low end. But this wasn't enough. So I decided to go one step further. And what I did was I added a sample, but just for the low end. And I was, and I was using one of the snare hits of the original snare performance. So I took one of the snares, I don't remember which one, you know, I took one of those snares here and just cut it out and put it here. And I was using Cubase inbuilt Groove Agent SE, which is a yeah drum sample player. And I, I even cut out two different snares, like a one shot here, I ended up only using one of them because it was blending better with the original track. And you can already hear that I've cut all the highs. So this is only for, for the punch. Let's just solo the snare. And then we add the sample. And it just adds a touch more of the punch. Let's just listen to the sample solo. So it's basically just giving us that oop, oop. Uh, Let's have a look at the processing snare drum sample. Oh, a lot going on. So we got a tube tech, pull tech, boosting all the lows, basically. Boom. And then here, a low cut so it doesn't get too deep. Another transient designer boosting the shit out of the attack and a talkback limiter. Interesting, interesting. And then we blend this with the original snare, just a little bit. This is very subtle. Don't know if you even need this, but I, I guess it just gave us a little more punch down there. Let's move on with the kick drum. And the kick drum, that was interesting. I think they used two real kick drums in that mix. That means two microphones. 
And I started with the first, with kick mic one. And it sounded great. Let me just turn off all the plugins. Sound like this. Great raw signal. So what I did is this, three plugins. I started with, again, another tube tech, which is great for kick drums. Boosting and cutting the lows, the pull tech trick at 30 hertz, then cutting out the upper bass region and boosting the shit out of the highs. And even here around 4K, around 5K, sounds fantastic. Let me bypass the plugin. Let's have a listen. I love pull techs on kicks. Another EQ. Typically, yes, typically a low cut, linear phase, and finally drum leveler just to, to even out the hits a little bit. And that's all. And I thought like, cool, now I can copy just those settings to the other kick drum. And I was so wrong about that because the other kick drum sounds so different. So you can see here how many plugins I needed to make the kick drum sound great. So I just copied the first three plugins, you know, like on the other kick track, but it sounded like this. Instead of this. Boom, 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 much higher with a weird resonance and just much worse. But again, I didn't want to use any samples, so I was challenged. So I was EQing the shit out of it, and I was even using the EQ matching function. That's how I came up with this EQ, and that wasn't enough, so I did it again and came up with this EQ, and then I manually EQ'd this. So, you know, so I was using the, the other kick drum as a reference and yeah, and I let um, Fab Filter Pro Q do the rest and then I just fine tuned it a little bit. And then I went into Transient Shaper. That is a transient designer of Softube, which is like a little more versatile than the original SPL version. And I'm boosting the shit out of the attack here. So I ended up with the kicks sounding pretty much the same, not the same, but close enough. Both kicks. Awesome, right? I mean, that's some 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 serious some serious EQing there. But it worked, and I think in the end they sound close enough to so you don't hear the difference in the mix anymore. Then we have the D4 sample that they provided. So this is taken from the Alesis D4 drum trigger module from the 90s. And of course I wanted to use that sample. So I EQ'd it and made it sound even more clicky. And blended it with the original kicks. One, two, three. And without the D4. And with the D4. A little more clicky. So I'm using that sample and I'm using the snare sample taken from the tracks, but it's both very, very subtle. Uh, any other any other tracks? Yeah, we got a hi-hat track, which was a little annoying, so I'm using Soothe on the hi-hat. And you know what? I think I'm gonna add a high cut. I prefer that. I don't need those super high frequencies in there. Uh, final, 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 final tracks are the room tracks. Let's have a look. They go to another group and up here. And so I did cut the low end on the room tracks. They have a nice low end. I like the kick there. But it was just getting in the way of my heavily EQ'd kick drums. And it also triggered the compression a little better that you can see now. Another instant of the fantastic Coronev talkback limiter. Hey. 
heavy compression and I'm using Soothe and I think pretty drastically faster and with a little more sharpness. Let's find a section with cymbals. Together with the main overheads, they They give us a pretty balanced cymbal mix. Then I added a reverb to snare, toms, and the room. And this reverb is also a typical 90s reverb. It's the Altiverb version of the stereo plate coming from the Lexicon 480. A little shorter. So let me turn the reverb on and off. So you mainly hear it on the snare, but it's also like gluing the drums a little bit together. Talking about gluing the drums together, all the drums are going to my hardware compressor over there, parallel compressing around 560 dB or something, just gluing them together again. One more time, I gotta talk about my academy, the Cola Audio Cult. Uh, there's another course about drum bus compression there, in there. So if you are a member, you can get that course, like all the other courses, where I explain like different ways of compressing your drum bus in a metal mix. And that's, I think that's something you really wanna see. And I'm doing the same thing here. So that was our drum sound, that was the guitar sound and the bass sound. Um, let's just have a look at the vocals, because the vocals tracked with a U87, they just sounded great from the get-go. So not much processing right now. We start with... I brought you to your knees. Stop your crying. There's no effect on me, dude. With... They were already compressed, I could see that in the waveform, but a little more compression coming from a distressor plugin in the opto mode that I really like on vocals. We go into Pro Q, uh, just making things sound a little more hi-fi, removing some of the boxy frequencies, 650, adding some presence here, cutting some of the very highs that you usually don't need for death metal vocals, and some of the lows. I brought you to your knees. Stop your crying. There's no effect on me, dude. Is what you will be. Just makes it sound a little more aggressive. Next up is a plugin that I don't use very often, but this is Saturn from Fab Filter. Um, and I'm using the clean tape, just adding some dirt to everything above. I don't know, where do I see this? 450. It is what you will become. Now die to be left apart. Yeah. I will make sure that it's with pain. Tracer, your very life is about to be. Yeah, making it sound a little more dirty and without sounding like a real distortion. I will add some real distortion later, but just to certain parts where I want this to sound like an effect. All right, then we have a de-esser. It is what you will become. No die. Actually doing a lot. To be left apart. 8 dB of de -essing. but sounds good. And that's all for now. Maybe one more thing I can show you is that I used this second vocal track here and and I sent this one Stop your crying. There's no effect on me. into a bigger reverb. By the way, I'm using my TCM2000 hardware reverb. TCM2000, cool reverb. So it's going in there. I'm sending this into an effect track. Like I have a pre-fader send, it's pre-fader, so it always stays the same no matter how loud I, I make the, that track. And it's going into this channel where I have this lovely little plugin, the little micro shift from Sound Toys, which is just a fake stereo effect, like a chorus or something. And I usually high and low cut it a little bit, otherwise it sounds too chorusy. And so you can hear that this just adds a stereo wideness to the mono 
vocal track. Who will make sure that it's with pain? Oh, listen with the other track. Pain, treasure, yeah, your very life. life. It just goes wider whenever the singer doubles uh, the 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 vocals. And the idea behind this is that usually if I track vocals, I also have one main voice and then I always, when there's doubling, I try to have two tracks on the left and the right to create like a real double effect, left and right, real stereo effect. And this wasn't possible here, so I fake it. And it sounds pretty cool together. Treasure, your very life! It's about to be! I just like, like to play with the wideness of the vocals in a death metal mix like this. This. All right, so this was my brief overview of that mix. Uh, make sure to download the tracks yourself and to play around with them and to upload your mix at ratemymix.com and to win some cool shit. $70,000 worth prizes, it's amazing. Um, now I'm gonna do the automation, especially of the toms, maybe of the kick, and I'm gonna add some cool vocal effects, some vocal distortion, some delays and some other stuff. But you know what, I'm gonna do that inside my academy. Yeah, I'm sorry. So um, if you want to learn more about recording, mixing, mastering metal music, all kinds of metal, not only death metal, but all kinds of metal, um, have a look below. There's a link to my academy where you can get tons and tons of different courses from me and from other people where you can upload your mixes and get a feedback from professionals like me and where you can get in touch with other people. Uh, it's a subscription-based thingy, but you can also buy every course separately if you want that. Uh, it's a great place. I would love to see you there. That's all for today. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to download the tracks at Rate My Mix. Don't forget to join my Academy Cola Audio Cult. And uh, don't forget, of course, to say hello to your grandma. I know she loves my videos. <laughs> How often have I, have I done that joke? I still like it. I still like it. And again, Germans don't have humor, so how should I know if that's actually funny? You, <laughs> you tell me. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Check out the links below. I love you all. See you in hell, motherfuckers. Bye-bye.